And now chapter 12. The Mohini Murti Incarnation Bewilders Lord Shiva. Shukdev Goswami said, The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, in the form of a woman, captivated the demons and enabled the demigods to drink the nectar. After hearing of these pastimes, Lord Shiva, who is carried by a bull, went to the place where Madhusudana, the Lord, resides. Accompanied by his wife, Uma, and surrounded by his companions, the ghosts, Lord Shiva went there to see the Lord's form as a woman. The Supreme Personality of Godhead welcomed Lord Shiva and Uma with great respect, and after being seated comfortably, Lord Shiva duly worshipped the Lord and smilingly spoke as follows. O chief demigod among the demigods, O all-pervading Lord, master of the universe, by your energy you are transformed into the creation. You are the root and efficient cause of everything. You are not material. Indeed, you are the super soul or supreme living force of everything. Therefore, you are Parameshvara, the supreme controller of all controllers. The manifest, the unmanifest, false ego and the beginning, maintenance and annihilation of this cosmic manifestation all come from you, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But because you are the Absolute Truth, the Supreme Absolute Spirit Soul, the Supreme Brahman, such changes as birth, death and sustenance do not exist in you. Pure devotees or great saintly persons who desire to achieve the highest goal in life and who are completely free from all material desires for sense gratification engage constantly in the transcendental service of your lotus feet. My Lord, you are the Supreme Brahman, complete in everything. Being completely spiritual, you are eternal, free from the material modes of nature, and full of transcendental bliss. Indeed, for you, there is no question of lamentation. Since you are the supreme cause, the cause of all causes, nothing can exist without you. Yet we are different from you in a relationship of cause and effect, for in one sense, the cause and effect are different. You are the original cause of creation, manifestation, and annihilation, and you bestow benedictions upon all living entities. Everyone depends upon you for the results of his activities, but you are always independent. My dear Lord, your Lordship alone is the cause and the effect. Therefore, although you appear to be two, you are the absolute one. As there is no difference between the gold of a golden ornament and the gold in a mine, there is no difference between cause and effect. Both of them are the same. Only because of ignorance do people concoct differences and dualities. You are free from material contamination, and since the entire cosmos is caused by you and cannot exist without you, it is an effect of your transcendental qualities. Thus the conception that Brahman is true and the world false cannot be maintained. Those who are known as the impersonalist Vedantists regard you as the impersonal Brahman. Others, known as the Mimamsaka philosophers, regard you as religion. 
the Sankhya philosophers regard you as the transcendental person who is beyond Prakriti and Purusha and who is the controller of even the demigods. The followers of the codes of devotional service known as the Pancharatras regard you as being endowed with nine different potencies. And the Patanjala philosophers, the followers of Patanjali Muni, regard you as the supreme independent personality of Godhead who has no equal or superior. O my Lord, I, who am considered to be the best of the demigods, and Lord Brahma and the great rishis, headed by Marichi, are born of the mode of goodness. Nonetheless, we are bewildered by your illusory energy and cannot understand what this creation is. Aside from us, what is to be said of others, like the demons and human beings, who are in the base modes of material nature, Rajoguna and Tamoguna? How will they know you? My Lord, you are the supreme knowledge personified. You know everything about this creation and its beginning, maintenance and annihilation. And you know all the endeavors made by the living entities by which they are either implicated in this material world or liberated from it. As the air enters the vast sky and also enters the bodies of all moving and non-moving entities, you are present everywhere, and therefore you are the knower of all. My Lord, I have seen all kinds of incarnations you have exhibited by your transcendental qualities, and now that you have appeared as a beautiful young woman, I wish to see that form of your Lordship. My Lord, we have come here desiring to see that form of your Lordship which you showed to the demons to captivate them completely and in this way enable the demigods to drink nectar. I am very eager to see that form. When Lord Vishnu was thus requested by Lord Shiva, who carries a trident in his hand, he smiled with gravity and replied to Lord Shiva as follows. When the demons took away the jug of nectar, I assumed the form of a beautiful woman to bewilder them by directly cheating them and thus to act in the interest of the demigods. O oh, best of the demigods, I shall now show you my form that is very much appreciated by those who are lusty. Since you want to see that form, I shall reveal it in your presence. After speaking in this way, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, immediately disappeared, and Lord Shiva remained there with Uma, looking for him all around with moving eyes. Thereafter, in a nice forest nearby, full of trees with reddish-pink leaves and varieties of flowers, Lord Shiva saw a beautiful woman playing with a ball. Her hips were covered with a shining sari and ornamented with a belt. Because the ball was falling down and bouncing up as she played with it, her breasts trembled, and because of the weight of those breasts and her heavy flower garlands, her waist appeared to be all but breaking at every step, as her two soft feet, which were reddish like coral, moved here and there. The woman's face was decorated by broad, beautiful, restless eyes, which moved as the ball bounced here and there from her hand. The two brilliant earrings on her ears decorated her shining cheeks like bluish reflections, and the hair scattered on her face made her even more beautiful to see. As she played with the ball, the sari covering her body became loose, and her hair scattered. She tried to bind her hair with her beautiful left hand, and at the same time she played with the ball by striking it with her right hand. This was so attractive that the Supreme Lord, by His internal potency, in this way captivated everyone. While Lord Shiva observed the beautiful woman playing with the ball, she sometimes glanced at him and slightly smiled in bashfulness. 
as he looked at the beautiful woman and she watched him, he forgot both himself and Uma, his most beautiful wife, as well as his associates nearby. When the ball leaped from her hand and fell at a distance, the woman began to follow it, but as Lord Shiva observed these activities, a breeze suddenly blew away the fine dress and belt that covered her. Thus Lord Shiva saw the woman, every part of whose body was beautifully formed, and the beautiful woman also looked at him. Therefore, thinking that she was attracted to him, Lord Shiva became very much attracted to her. Lord Shiva, his good sense taken away by the woman because of lusty desires to enjoy with her, became so mad for her that even in the presence of Bhavani he did not hesitate to approach her. The beautiful woman was already naked, and when she saw Lord Shiva coming toward her, she became extremely bashful. Thus she kept smiling, but she hid herself among the trees and did not stand in one place. His senses being agitated, Lord Shiva, victimized by lusty desires, began to follow her, just as a lusty elephant follows a she-elephant. After following her with great speed, Lord Shiva caught her by the braid of her hair and dragged her near him. Although she was unwilling, he embraced her with his arms. Being embraced by Lord Shiva like a female elephant embraced by a male, the woman, whose hair was scattered, swirled like a snake. O king, this woman, who had large high hips, was a woman of Yoga Maya presented by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. She released herself somehow or other from the fond embrace of Lord Shiva's arms and ran away. As if harassed by an enemy in the form of lusty desires, Lord Shiva followed the path of Lord Vishnu, who acts very wonderfully, and who had taken the form of Mohini. Just as a maddened bull elephant follows a female elephant who is able to conceive pregnancy, Lord Shiva followed the beautiful woman and discharged semen, even though his discharge of semen never goes in vain. O King, wheresoever on the surface of the globe fell the semen of the great personality of Lord Shiva, mines of gold and silver later appeared. Following Mohini, Lord Shiva went everywhere, near the shores of the rivers and lakes, near the mountains, near the forests, near the gardens, and wherever there lived great sages. O Maharaj Pariksit, best of kings, when Lord Shiva had fully discharged semen, he could see how he himself had been victimized by the illusion created by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus he restrained himself from any further maya. Thus Lord Shiva could understand his position and that of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who has unlimited potencies. Having reached this understanding, he was not at all surprised by the wonderful way Lord Vishnu had acted upon him. Seeing Lord Shiva unagitated and unashamed, Lord Vishnu, Madhusudana, was very pleased. Thus he resumed his original form and spoke, Best of the gods, although you have been amply harassed because of my potency in assuming the form of a woman, you are established in your position. Therefore, may all good fortune be upon you. My dear Lord Shambhu, who within this material world but you can surpass my illusory energy? People are generally attached to sense enjoyment and conquered by its influence. Indeed, the influence of material nature is very difficult for them to surmount. The material external energy or maya who cooperates with me in creation and who is manifested in the three modes of nature will not be able to bewilder you any longer. O King, having thus been praised by the Supreme Personality who bears the mark of Srivatsa on his chest, Lord Shiva circumambulated him. Then, after taking permission from him, Lord Shiva returned to his abode, Kailas, along with his associates. O descendant of Bharat Maharaj, Lord Shiva, in jubilation, then addressed his wife, Bhavani, who is accepted by all authorities as the potency of Lord Vishnu. Lord Shiva said, 
O Goddess, you have now seen the illusory energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the unborn master of everyone. Although I am one of the principal expansions of his lordship, even I was illusioned by his energy. What then is to be said of others who are fully dependent on Maya? When I finished performing mystic yoga for one thousand years, you asked me upon whom I was meditating. Now, here is that supreme person to whom time has no entrance and who the Vedas cannot understand. My dear king, the person who bore the great mountain on his back for the churning of the ocean of milk is the same supreme personality of Godhead known as Sharngadanva. I have now described to you his prowess. The endeavor of one who constantly hears or describes this narration of the churning of the ocean of milk will never be fruitless. Indeed, chanting the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the only means to annihilate all sufferings in this material world. Assuming the form of a young woman, and thus bewildering the demons, the Supreme Personality of Godhead distributed to his devotees, the demigods, the nectar produced from the churning of the ocean of milk. Unto that Supreme Personality of Godhead, who always fulfills the desires of his devotees, I offer my respectful obeisances. Thus ends the twelfth chapter of the eighth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Mohini Murti Incarnation Bewilders Lord Shiva.